What's up, powerful people? My name is Eli, aka Super Kid, aka Clint Swift, and I am here to welcome you to a brand new series here on Snake Feathers. Let's play West of Loathing. I have been playing this game more than I intended to before beginning the recording, but I just had so much fun playing it last night that I was like, I played for like five hours or something without intent. I just wanted to get some stuff like set up and do some like testing and stuff, but. I was just having a blast, so hopefully everybody uh, enjoys this series. Hopefully everybody uh, watching is excited and wants to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff. I would love it if you do that. So let's let's pick a bear-based name for us, okay? We're wanted, obviously, for protagonizing. Uh, Kodiak McCoy, that's a cool name. Fozzy Cody. Bear McCoy. Bjorn Cartwright. Hmm. I like that. Let's go with Bjorn Cartwright. What do you say, Power People? Let's dive on into this game. Play as Bjorn Cartwright. We're ready to get going. Are you? Yeah. I had the strangest dream. I was choosing a character class. I want to be... I haven't tried Cowpuncher at all. I'll try that. We'll do Cowpuncher for this this playthrough, shall we? Uh, I want to be a cow puncher. Let's real quickly turn the music down a smidgen. There we go. All right. Let us move on around our room. You read the spine of one of your books, The Treasury of Eagle Lighthouse. That was one of my favorites. Hero of the Spooky Grove. Ruth Danger and the Dark Basement. I loved that one. Sal Swift and the Trouble at Witch City. Mom gave me this one a few years ago. Escape from Witch Cabin. Rufus liked this one as much as I did. Trouble at the Forgotten Citadel. Mom gave me this one a few years ago. Oh, hey, this might come in handy. You got an item. Walking Stupid. Let's check that out. Let's uh, read this book. <laughs> We have unlocked the uh, stupid walking perk, but unfortunately we lost the book after reading it. Um, should we turn nostalgia mode on? I kinda want to. Makes it sepia tone, which is nice. I like that. Um, hmm. I'm gonna turn the automatically spend XP off. All right. And then maybe, uh, Maybe that's good. Maybe we're all good now. What do you think? We got an experience for combing our hair. Hey, Russell, how's, how you doing? Caw, I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Caw, caw, caw. I'm gonna feed him a cricket. You grab a cricket from your cricket bag and feed it to Russell. He coos appreciatively and nuzzles your hand. Maybe it's time for you to leave, too. Yeah, I don't want to just leave him in the room in the cage while I'm gone. Uh, you open your bedroom window, not picture, <laughs> and unlatch the door to Russell's cage. He winks at you, calls one last time, and flies away to the west. Time to hit the trail, buddy. I like how you can just turn the music off, too. That's pretty hilarious to me. Well, what a mess. We better stack this firewood before we leave. There we go. This hearth really puts the hearth and hearth and home. <laughs> it sure does. We're gonna you're gonna miss mom's cooking, that's for sure. Mom's pie safe. Keeps all her pies safe. Well, that makes sense. It's interesting that uh me and Rufus are the only ones with rooms in this house. You pick up one of your brother's weird books and flip through it. Philosophy Naturalis Principa Mathematicus. That's uh Sir Isaac Newton's book. Disquisitiones Arithmeticae? Is, who's that by, uh... Mm, I don't remember who that's by. Isn't that the book that they wrote the, uh... Poincaré Conjecture in? I don't remember now. I don't know that one. Corpus Arid... Ar Agrimensorum... Agrimensorum Romor Romanorum? I don't know. The body of something Roman? I don't know. Let's check out this puzzle cube, though. 
This was this is one of your kid brother's weird puzzles. I better fiddle with it. I got an experience for it. Heck yeah. Um It's all covered in weird diagrams and charts. Time to venture out into the world. I'm leaving now, mama. Who smiled warmly as I approached. We're gonna miss you, kiddo. Oh, and before you leave, I got you a present. A present? Yep, it's that book you wanted from Crimbo. Crimbo? I know it's early, but... Oh, for Crimbo. That's Christmas. Crimbo. That makes sense. Um, that one about picking locks? The one about desert survival? The one about bartering? Mm. What? Let's do locks. Picking locks. You got an item. Locks and how to pick them. Please be careful out there. Write us a letter when you can. She hugs you. I will, Mom. Goodbye. I am impersonating Evan Rachel Wood from uh, Westworld, by the way. Not a, not a real person. Like a fake person. Played by a real person. Uh, that hat doesn't fit you, Dad. I'll grow into it. <laughs> Time for me to leave. Oh, you got me some brass knucks. Listen, I want you to have this. It's your grandmother's brass knuckles. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Pa. Um, good. Good luck out there. Be sure to say goodbye to your mother. I did. Goodbye, Dad. <laughs> um, these brass knucks are gonna be nice. Real nice. Oh, and we done acquired some lockpicking expertise. After you've, after you're done reading it, you donate it to a local orphanage. Soon, soon those orphans will be able to make their escape. Go orphans, go. Dang right. Uh, your brother Rufus is standing here looking nervous. He's pretty good at looking nervous. I'll give him his puzzle cube back. You hand him the puzzle and he starts fidgeting with it. Hey Rufus, time for me to head west. I still don't understand why you're leaving. He's got a point, you know. Why are you going west anyway? Uh, get off this stupid farm. Rufus, you know how much I hate it here. I can't stay. I've got to go where the action is. <laughs> I'm sliding between Dan Doherty and Evan Rachel Wood. I don't even know what I'm doing with this accent, but I'm going to try to keep it going. Not really. I'm going to slide in and out of it just like always. But it's so dangerous. 60% of the people who go west get killed within a year, and that's a statistic. A statistic is from before the cows came home. I'll be okay. You worry about taking care of mom and dad. I'll worry about me. Okay, if you say so. I still think you'll be dead by Crimble. Crimble. <laughs> That's maybe my favorite touch. Uh, I'll miss you, Rufus. Okay. You give him a playful punch on the arm. And then leave. Shall we go west, young man? I say yes. Looks like this is your first... This isn't your first rodeo. Would you like to skip the Boring Springs prologue and head straight to dirt water? Any horses or partners you've unlocked in any previous game? No, I'm going to I'm going to play the prologue. Well, let's go play the prologue, y'all. Um I guess I'll let us we, we can watch the credits, give these guys the their just desserts. Gave me an opportunity to sip on some coffee. Film editor? I don't believe any film was used in the making of this game. Dialect coach. Riff Connor. What's up, Riff? What up, baby? Um, stunt coordinator? Good golly, Miss Molly. Who'd have thunk it that all of these film positions would be, yeah, the, the boom operator. That's That makes sense. Since there's no speaking. 200 miles later. What do we got here? Ah. Boring Springs. Ow, dude. Ow. Well, the bad news is you fell off that cart and got knocked out for a couple hours. And now you got no ride, no meat, no prospects. The good news is you're in a town... Rather than in a gulch somewhere. Not much of a town, though. I better get up and dust myself off. <clears throat> Here in the town of Boring Springs, better get this turnip. Get myself a dusty turnip. I can eat that later. 
I'm gonna keep pricking myself on these cacti in order to toughen myself up. A broken board. Uh, a sign on the on the door reads "Gone Drinking." That's from that's the BS Horsery, Boring Springs Horsery. As you walk into the saloon, the crazy-eyed guy sitting to the left of the door shrieks and waves at you to get your attention. Hey, where's your hat, Dagnabbit? Well, uh, you can't drink in here without a hat. It ain't proper. He points you to the take a hat, leave a hat box next to the door. Let's check it out. You look through the hat box and find a sturdy-looking Stetson. This, that looks like something you'd wear. You better grab it. You got an item, four-gallon hat. You grab the hat and put it on. Thanks, sir. Pete. Thanks, Pete. He gives you a friendly, if somewhat twitchy nod. Say, feller. Yeah? You heading west? If and you want some company, I'd be more than happy to come along. Just let me know. Well, er, no pressure. All right, I'll keep it in mind. Thank you, Pete. It's a spittoon. People spit into it. You know without even looking in that it's absolutely disgusting. I'm gonna look at it though. Yeah, it's full of spit, regular spit, gross tobacco spit, chewing gum, and it looks like a few teeth as well. It's disgusting, and the smell, even from a distance, it smells horrible. Let's look closer. You are now on your hands and knees peering into a filth encrusted spittoon. I don't, I don't understand what's wrong with you. Wait, is there something shining at the bottom? Let's get it. You reach your hand toward the spittoon. Even before you touch it, you can feel the grossness in the air, like a greasy fog enveloping the stinking brass horror. It smells like the vomit, <laughs> the vomit trough of a mesquite barbecue eating contest. You hesitate. Never surrender. You plunge your hand into the awful soup. It makes a sound like glop. Your skin is burning. Your eyes start to water. <laughs> You're searching, baby. Your fingers make contact with something. You pull your hand out of the devil's terrine. Devil's terrine slowly, not daring to risk splashing the contents all over yourself. You appear to have gotten some kind of ring. Probably some kind of disease as well. Congratulations. You got an item. Nasty ring. Hooray? That's what we're saying. Um, The nasty ring. Though getting this ring was traumatic, you have to admit it was worth it. You got plus one to muscle, plus one to mysticality, and plus one to moxie. You can't beat that with a four foot stick. <laughs> that was a really powerful snore from that guy. Uh, we have three XP. That is not enough to raise any of our statistics. Uh, there are two people. There are two. These two are playing poker, or at least trying to. They keep looking back and forth from their hands to the how to play poker card that came with their deck, biting their lips and concentrating real hard. Good luck, you two. What's up, player? You walk up to the bar and wait patiently for the bartender to notice you. While you're waiting, you see a sign taped to the back of the wall reading, Reward for Lost Mugs, 25 meat each. The bartender finally notices you. Howdy, cowboy. Howdy, barkeep. Name's Bjorn. What brings you to our little backwater? Oh, the usual. I came out west to make my fortune. Not having much luck so far, though. Any work around these parts? Unfortunately, Boring Springs already has more people in it than jobs. It's more of an errand town, if you catch my meaning. If you're looking for a real job, I'd recommend taking... Recommend talking to the railroad people up in Dirtwater. Well, let's ask about the railroad, then. The Manifest Destiny Railroad Company from back east, they're trying to run a line of Frisco and having a heck of a time doing so. And they're hiring? Oh, I reckon they're always hiring for one thing or another. Big company, that. Let's ask about dirt water. Dirt water? Dirt water is interesting. Far enough west that it's still more or less exempt from rule of law, but it's not so far west that it's been burned to the ground by the damned cows. Lot of opportunity there. She pauses for a few seconds. This is a girl? I didn't even realize that. Lost in thought. Yeah, if I were a younger woman, I'd probably head that way myself. You mentioned errands? Yeah, this forsaken burg is always falling apart in one way or another. The hostler is always needing help since he hurt his leg, and the no account Sherf <laughs> Sherf could certainly stand to have somebody doing his job for him. Anything else? Well, I got a goblin loose in the basement, some cowpoke in the 
in from the gulch didn't wipe his boots off and spores got spores everywhere. Spores? Is that how the goblins are created with like fungus? I could probably handle that goblin. Much obliged. I'll unlock the basement door for you. Oh, and you'll need this. A little weak fungicide. I'll take care of it. Howdy, I'm Bjorn. Howdy, Bjorn, I'm Horace. Nice to meet you, what do you do? I'm the town hostler. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm the town horse selling guy. Gotcha. How's that working out for you? Oh, these those horses are just flying out the door. So business is booming, nice. No, I mean the horses keep running away. I haven't sold one in ages. <laughs> oh, oh. Is that why you're drinking, you're here drinking instead? Uh, yeah. And me being in here drinking instead of watching the horses for probably how come they keep escaping. It's one of those vicious circle things. Well, I am in need of a horse. Do you have any left? One, kind of a boring one, but it's got four legs and back on it. <laughs> and a back to sit on. Come see me at the stable. I'd be happy to show it to you. Okay. The woman glares at you. You should probably just let her drink. You know, I probably will. I should probably leave him alone. <laughs> Stupid walking is so great. I love it. Pile of old newspapers. Let's take one. You got an item. Boring Springs Gazette. April 20th, 1895. It's 420, y'all. Um, a crate of Nurse brand whiskey. Good for what ails you. Let's grab a bottle. What's up, dog? What's it? The goblin shouts, Briark? Um... This will just take him down, so let's hit him with the weak fungicide. Thanks for playing, buddy. Buckaroo. Having dispatched the goblin, you pat yourself on the back for a job well done. How much experience do we have now? Six! Good golly. Uh, we can raise our grit. Uh, beef up. Increase muscle. Ooh. So that's like in battle. Tap into your innermost wellspring of beefiness, temporarily raising, increasing your muscle. Hmm. That's cool. You're rough and tumble, rowdy and ready to rumble. <laughs> um. Well, I don't have enough for that. Holy moly, 400. It takes a while to get that much. Muscle. And grit. Those are the two we can increase. I'm going to go with muscle increase. Uh, okay. Talk to the, or the barkeep. Took care of that goblin. Thank you kindly, Bjorn. I knew you were a stand-up feller the moment I, you walked in here. She reaches under the bar and grabs a bag of meat. Here you go. It's the least I can do by way of thanks. 200 meat. I tip my hat to you. Who's the lady drinking whiskey out of a beer mug? That's Susie. She's a rancher from nearby. A real tough broad. I ain't recommend you pester her. Why's that? Lost her whole family in a cow attack recently. It's so hard not to do the accent. <laughs> Got some pent-up frustration about it. Ouch. Well, that makes sense. These two are playing poker, or at least trying to. They keep looking back and forth from their hands to the how to play poker card that came with their deck, biting their lips and concentrating. Can I play? They look at you nervously. Look, I have some meat, let's play. You put 20 meat on the table and sit down before they can say no. One of them shuffles the cards sloppily and deals a new round. You get a pair of tens, plus a two, a three, and a king. So, a pair. Uh, I'm gonna bet aggressively. Yeehaw, I bet 15 meat. They look at each other nervously, but they both call your bet. Okay, read them and weep. You show your pair of tens plus two, three king. The guy on the left has a full house. Two jacks and three aces, and the gal on the right somehow got a straight flush. Two, three, six, and hearts. Uh, I'm gonna intimidate him. You explain that jacks are worth nine points each, giving the guy on the left a total of 21 points to the gal on to the gal on the right's 20, and you're 25 plus a king. 
and the king means they have to and the king means they have to either pay you in human teeth or an extra 10 meat each. They gasp and push more meat across the table at you. Having collected your winnings, you stand up. Thank you for the help. They thank you for helping them learn the game. We got 50 meat. Heck yeah. Uh, that wasn't very honest of us, but you know what? It's the way it goes sometimes. What's up, Sheriff? Howdy, stranger. Welcome to Boring Springs. I'm the Sheriff in these parts. The what? <sighs> the Sheriff, okay? Blasted sign painters. Say, you wouldn't happen to be looking for work, would you? In fact, as a matter of fact, I am. Great, because I happen to have some. There's a gang of hoodlums around here. What call themselves the Fricker Gang. Last time I arrested one of them, they busted them out and took my cell door with them. It, uh, well, it ain't much good without the door. And, and I need somebody tough, smart, and or slick to go fetch it back for me. <laughs> Uh, well, that's convenient. Why don't you go? Why don't you do it? You're the sheriff, after all. I gotta stay here and practice my chair tipping. Hmm. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Funny you should say that, because I'm sending the deputy along with you to keep you out of trouble. He takes a pistol out of his desk and hands it to you. You got an item. Deputy pistol. A deputy? You deputized a gun? You're new in town. Maybe you ain't noticed, but there ain't much to do here except drink. Here, let me write down where the Fricker Gang hides out. Hideout is for you. He makes a little note on your map. You discovered a new map location of Fricker Gang's hideout. Got it. I'll be back with the door. Let's grab that mug real quick. Those are the Frickers. No, I didn't even want to talk to you, bruh. Bruh, bruh. What's up? Howdy. You seriously doubt that his name is Bard? Uh, no, it's Braid. Step right up. Step right up. Braid's the name and trades the game. Howdy, Braid. What are you trading? Well, today, sir, I'm trading locks of soap for a, and a stick of dynamite for a needle. Locks for soap. And to the cunning Skinner who brings me three rattlesnake hides, well, to that adventurous soul, I will trade one fine try to find silver pocket watch. That's interesting. I'll take some dynamite for this needle. Alright. I need to get some soap. For goodness sake. You approach the weird cactus man hybrid. He smiles at you. Howdy, cactus man. Howdy yourself. Name's Bill. Cactus Bill. What happened to you, Bill? Well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much. Too much cactus beer, and it turned me into a cactus. <laughs> Knock Alice warned me it'd happen, but I didn't listen. And that's why they call you Cactus Bill? No. That's just a coincidence. Oh. Does it hurt? Does what hurt? You know. Being... a cactus? Oh! I <laughs> know, it's actually kind of nice. The natural fermentation process inside the cactus part of me keep me pretty drunk most of the time. I guess it is a mite boring. Yeah, I bet. It wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read. You don't happen to have a newspaper or anything, do you? You give him the newspaper you found in the basement of the saloon. Much obliged, partner. Now, let's see here. What can I do in return to return the favor? Oh, I know. My shovel. I left it behind the outhouse at the Orhole Mine. It's yours if you go and get it. I'm sure you'll find a use for it. And we got 3 XP. Behind the outhouse at Orhole Mine. Got it. Thanks, Bill. Don't mention it. Now, if you could just kind of stick that newspaper to my face before you leave. Sure thing, Bill. Um, We need to get to the mine. Where's the mine? Get lost. All right. It's kind of rude. What up? Afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? How's business? Oh, you know, every damn hostler. <laughs> Tell the truth, though. It's pretty terrible. All of my horses keep running away. Well, except this completely ordinary one. That's rough. Maybe I can help. Oh, God, yes. Thank you. Please, I'd go fetch them myself, except for this injury. I'll give you 300 meat each for finding them. 
How many are there? Three! Here, let me see your map. They pretty much always run away to the same places. Hey, we got Old Hole Mine, Boring Springs Boneyard, and Thousand Gulch, Thousand Snakes Gulch. Why these places? I think they like environments that are thematically appropriate. Here, when you find one, feed it the, some of these oats. That should send them back here. We got a bag of homing oats. That's cool. Uh, how does that work? They're special pigeon-infused oats. Okay, will do. Excuse me. See you later. Okay. Let's go to the mine and get that shovel. Look behind. This is where Bill said to look. Look behind the outhouse. Hey, he wasn't kidding. Now that... Not that this would have been a funny thing to kid about, I guess. <laughs> you got a shovel. Heck yeah. There's some meat in this cart. Meat ore. You got 50 meat. Heck yeah. Score! And now that we got that shovel, we can dig in places. Can't get past this rubble. This looks dangerous. At least there's no plunger. Yeah, yeah. What's in here? What do we got in this cargo elevator? Hmm. Let's go to level three, where they have the tools. Oh, we need a needle for this, okay. Is there anywhere to get one of them handy? Okay. Hmm, might have to come back for that. That's kind of funny, I've never had that happen. Um, go to Boring Springs Boneyard, then. Our founder, Zephaniah Boring. 1806 to 1885. He was actually a really interesting guy. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Benjamin Crockett. 1320 to 1364. He showed up way too early. <laughs> uh, Beauregard Skeleton. Captain 3rd Cavalry. Uh, 1820 to 1866. Let's dig up the grave and fight him. Because that's the kind of guy we are, apparently. It's digging up graves. Um... Hmm. Let's go ahead and beef up. <laughs> uh, well, I could have used that dynamite. I don't know if I need to. No, I don't think I will. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. He put a stop to Captain Skeleton's unnatural animation. We got an old cavalry saber and a gold tooth. Nice. Uh, oops. Hmm. Sweet. Five to six damage. Awesome. Gold tooth. This was in the ground for a very long time, then in someone's mouth for a very short time, and now it's in your backpack. <laughs> well said. Uh, skeleton. I don't think I saw what it said there. My bad. Um, yeah, let's hit him with the saber. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I guess I should have beefed up first. But we were still victorious. And we have 19 unspent XP. Um... I'm gonna raise my grit. Uh... I think I'll raise my grit. No, I, I was gonna do it twice. Hmm. I raised my muscle as well. Your pulse quickens as you get near the spooky translucent horse. But let's approach her. You approach the weird semi-transparent horse cautiously so as to not startle her, though you quickly come to the realization that this is not a horse that startles easily. Hello there, hi, I'm a friend, okay? Hey, that's a little strange, but how did you do, how did, wait. That's a little strange, how you did that without opening your mouth. 
Let's pat her on the nose. Uh, you pat the horse's nose, which is very cold. If you were going to ride her, you would want a extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. Let's pat her on the nose again. Yep, still cold, brr. Let's feed her the oats. Here you go, girl. Have some oats. You ha you hold out a handful of oats for the horse, but she's but she just sort of stares right through you. Brr. Please don't look at me like that. Snort. Uh, try the oats again. You hold the oats out again, but the horse continues to ignore them. What's the matter? Are they not spooky enough? I'm not sure how it makes how to make oats spooky. I guess I could put some bone meal on them. I don't have any handy to grind up to grind up bones with. Anything handy to grind up bones with. Grave dirt? Winnie! Is that a yes? Weird. Okay. Add some grave dirt to the oats. You sprinkle the oats with just a bit of dirt of grave dirt and hold them out again. The horse gazes expressionlessly at them, then eats them. <laughs> and with that, she glides away in the direction of the town. Bizarre. Truly bizarre. And this is the family... The family Cochran. That was Silas Cochran, a baby. That's sad. And... Very limited in its description. Um... Let's return to the town of Boring Springs. Now I can clean up the filth in the thoroughfare. See? It's nasty work, but somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> Look at all this experience we're getting. And another mug. Nice. Let's go turn the mug in. As well as the, uh... No, I guess just the mug. Oh, we can talk to the, uh... The hostler. The woman glares at you. Are you Susie Cochran? How... How'd you know my last name? I saw the graves in the cemetery. Susie scowls bitterly and mutters into her whiskey. I saw it happen. Saw the whole damn thing and I couldn't do nothing about it. The bartender said it was cows? Cows, right. I don't know what those things are, but they ain't cows. Not anymore. What happened? It was a raid. See, Ma and Pa used to ranch cattle back before... Well, before they come home. Pa didn't make it, but Ma and I managed to rebuild. We ranched pigs instead, and she left me the place when she passed. Go on. Well, I guess a passing herd sniffed out that they that it used to be a cow ranch, and they attacked a couple days ago. Happened so fast, I didn't even have time to get my rifle out of the gun safe. Cow smashed in the front door, and fire started out the back by the root cellar. House went up in blazes just like that. What did you do? I... There wasn't anything I could do. Couldn't get upstairs to the kids because of the fire. I could, saw Tim trampled right in front of me. I just... She drains her glass. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm sorry. She refills her mug with a bottle of, on the bar and doesn't reply. What will you do now? Head west, I suppose. <laughs> Nothing keeping me here. No desire to stay. I can't leave without my rifle, though. Why not? It was Ma's rifle. All I got left of... of anybody. Where is it? Left it at the ranch like a damn fool. Listen, can I ask you a favor? I need someone to go get it for me. Yeah, I'll go get it. We going to the Cochran Ranch. And I believe this will be the last thing we do in this episode because my timer says one minute. But let's not worry about that just yet. All the water in this thing has boiled away. Good lord. It's like the atomic bomb went off here or something. <laughs> something in there. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this timer. Something behind this door is making some pretty awful noises. Go through it anyway. Looks like somebody was in the middle of fixing a knife. This is the varmint skin and knife. These pies were not safe. That is true. This thing looks angry. You're not gonna make it to this to that safe without dealing with it. <laughs> we better deal with it then. 
hadn't we? Um. Yep. It's got 15. Oh, let's. Ha! <laughs> Didn't even need to waste that. Look at that. Victory is ours. You defeated that nasty cow skull floating in a fl cloud of flame. Nice. It's the Cochran family's gun safe. You got an item. Susie's rifle. Excellent. Um, and now, let's go give it back to her, and we'll wrap things up. Oh, we need to give this, we need to get our money. Yeah, that's right. Anytime, thank you. Uh, just browsing, thanks. Oh, wait, and we need these. Just browsing, trying to get to the other needle, thank you. What did we need that? Oh, that was to pick the lock in the mine. That's right, that's right, that's right. Okay. Well, I thought I still had a mug. Did you find my rifle yet, stranger? Yep, here she is. Susie's eyes well up with tears as you hand her the rifle, and she roughly scrubs her sleeve across her face before any of them spill over. Thanks, stranger. I didn't catch your name. It's Bjorn. Thanks, Bjorn. Can't rightly say what this means to me. She looks at the rifle for a long moment, then looks back at you. She sighs. Well, that's enough wallowing in misery. Time for me to hit the road. If you want me to tag along when you head west, just say the word. Sounds good, Susie. All right. Um. Let's see. Where do we want to? Where do we want to stop at? Hmm. What about right here? All right. Powerful people. I had a blast in this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like this video. I mean, you made it all the way to the end, so I assume you like it. So go ahead and hit that like button. It does a lot to uh, help me out. And subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon. Leave any comments you have for me in the comment section. Uh, let me know what your thoughts on the game so far are. I think it's absolutely hilarious. I was describing it to my brother as uh, Fable sort of meets Deadwood with uh, insanely hilarious stuff in the game. So I'm really excited about this series. I hope everybody else is. Uh, before I go, I just want to remind everybody that we are powerful people. We have the ability to make the lives of the people around us better by being generous and patient and kind with those people. So I just want to give everybody a very friendly and non-judgmental reminder about that. So uh, I hope that's what you'll do. That's what I'm going to do. So on behalf of everybody here at Snake Feathers, my name is Eli, a.k.a. Super Kid, a.k.a. Clint Swift, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, peace, and love. <laughs>